Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. And I'll break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, interesting stuff going on, especially after the weekend that we just had. So first up, Grayscale is kicking off a national ad campaign to bring crypto to the masses. And uh, when I first heard about it, I was excited until I actually watched the video. Top New York regulator approves eight crypto assets for trading. Congratulations, New York. You're stepping into 2020. Also, there's uh, some concerning developments over their Coinbase. Apparently, it's taking uh, Ethereum Classic uh, almost uh, 14 days for confirmation times. And I just uh, can't believe that's actually going on. And lastly, we'll go over question of the day and we'll go over that last. But first, let's take a look at what's going on with the market. So today is August 10th, about 3 o'clock Texas time. And uh, looks like there's... Uh, yeah, not too much really going on. I mean, look, over the weekend, it was fantastic. I mean, uh, this was a heck of a weekend. The last seven days has just been unbelievable as far as like uh, the big gains. But for what goes up will inevitably come down. Who, who knows how far it's going to come down, but it will. So Bitcoin is actually up 1.3%, you know, pushing around that 12,000. So that looks great. Ethereum still holding strong at 393. So that is fantastic. I thought it would uh, retrace a little bit more, but hey, it's hovering around 400 and I can deal with that. XRP, wow, 29 cents. Tether is yes, Tether. And then Bitcoin Cash uh, right now solely holding strong at $300 even. So uh, yeah, pretty good. Bitcoin Cash doing pretty well, 0.5% increase. And Chainlink, the number six spot, is down almost 8%. But I got to tell you, it's been one hell of a run. Already went up, uh, you know, 58%. I mean, it's, it's gone up, up massively over the last week, two weeks, month. So uh, a little bit of retracement. I mean, come on, you had to have seen it. Uh, but I'll take it. Cardano down a little bit to 14 cents. Still looking good. Bitcoin SV, don't know why it's in the top 10. Litecoin doing well, especially after that little pump that we're going to go over as far as uh, for the New York uh, approving that for trading. So congratulations to all the Litecoin holders. I don't hold any Litecoin personally, but if you do, great job. And then uh, some other things. Man, Tezo still up again, 12%. Unbelievable. EO Stellar. So it looks like it's pretty positive across the board. I like to see that. IOTA up pretty well. NEO. <laughs> NEO. I used to own a bunch of NEO. I got rid of that. Uh, just... Uh, just uh, took too much of a dip, but it uh, looks pretty good. Anyhow, let's uh, take a look at what's going on in today's articles. But before we do that, uh, congratulations to CalL.Crypto. He is our winner from uh, a couple days ago. We did a Unstoppable Domains giveaway where all you had to do was just comment, uh, what was it, uh, tomato coin to 10K, and then put in your dot .crypto. So congratulations. Uh, Unstoppable Domains uh, gave you $100 worth of Ethereum. So uh, not too shabby for a couple seconds worth. Or excuse me, work. Huh. All right, top story. So Grayscale kicks off national ad campaign to bring crypto to the masses. Now this, first of all, um, this is fantastic news just as far as mass adoption goes and to get the information out there as much as possible. Everybody gets into something uh, for different reasons, right? Um, you may have seen an ad for a certain car or a truck or a product and you may have seen it like 20 30 times and it didn't really resonate with you but then something just clicked i don't know what it could be um, maybe there is some kind of new feature on a certain truck that you like like i gotta get that or maybe something comes out for some kind of uh, system or computer system that you want but it has this one per certain thing that really uh, sparks your interest so how whatever way that can be hit uh, on the head as far as the masses for cryptocurrency I'm all about so I applaud the situation however I took a look at the uh, at, at the video and it didn't really resonate with me but it's not just about me it's it's about what resonates with the most amount of people and I'm gonna leave that up to you and your decision when you watch the video so let's uh, see what this is all about so first up this is the actual video that uh, has already aired on places like CNBC and uh, Fox Fox business and da 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 so let's take a look at the actual video itself for, now, before I play it, I'm just going to tell you that the music is super loud, so I'm going to try to uh, reduce the um, uh, the actual volume. And one of the things I don't like about it is that <clears throat> maybe it's because I'm so maybe because I'm so old. Uh, but when I'm listening to it, I'm like, man, I can hear the, mu the music great, but I can hear what the guy's saying too much. I mean, I can, but not really fantastic. So here's the actual video, uh, 30 seconds. So let's take a listen. For money, people trade good tools, cattle, grain, even shells represented value. But then currency came along. They made it out of copper, gold, silver, wampum. 
So people decided to put all that value into a piece of paper and proceeded to wave goodbye to value, printing unlimited amounts of money as they passed the buck to the future. That's why it's Aye. time for digital oh. currency. Let's go. And your investment Aye. in the oh. Grayscale Fund. Go digital. Go Grayscale. Okay, so great. So that's the whole art. That's the whole um, you know video or the ad campaign. So let's see how it all works out. I, I just uh, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking to myself. Um, I understand the whole message. I understand where they where they're coming from, but in marketing and advertising uh, sales, you really have two emotions to, to really play on. Um, you have hope and fear. And uh, those are two of the big powerful motivators. That's why when you watch news, uh, you don't see a lot of positive news stories because they all uh, they know that sensationalism and negativity usually sells. And uh, I hate to say it that way, but that is just the truth uh, of how people usually uh, get into things. There's some part of our, our brain, our reptilian brain, the fight or flight, where we are magnetized uh, by, these, by these negative types of things. If it wasn't for that, uh, you'd see a hell of a lot more um, great news articles, but uh, or you, you don't on the uh, on the news. It's just uh, pretty much negative, negative, negative. So, am I saying that that they should go negative and do these types of things? No, I'm not. I'm just saying that there's different angles, and maybe this is just one of the angles that they're going to try. Uh, later on, I'm sure we're going to see more. And this is just one of their videos. They actually did another ad campaign. This was in 2019, where it was just called Drop Gold. And uh, I'll have you take a listen to this. I thought this was really good how they did this one. Why did you invest in gold? Are you living in the past? In a digital world, gold shouldn't weigh down your portfolio. You see where things are going. Digital currencies like Bitcoin are the future. They're secure, borderless, and unlike gold, they actually have utility. Leave the pack behind. It's time to drop gold. Go digital. Go grayscale. So something like that. So, I mean, again, every angle that, that you can use as far as marketing is uh, is can be a potential winner. You just have to hit people from different angles so they can actually get it because not everybody's the same and everybody's looking for different things. So uh, like I said, different angles are best. So let's get back to the actual article. So moving down, it's uh, so that was everything about that. But of course, Peter Schiff's always got to get involved some way, shape or form. That guy, I got to tell you, now that guy's a marketer. Um, love him or hate him. That guy's always in the news. But he says, uh, however, Peter Schiff is not happy about the ad campaign. No kidding. Uh, which he thinks is a duping attempt to mislead investors into buying Bitcoin again. In an earlier campaign in which Grayscale advised investors against buying gold went sour. That's the one we just watched. Uh, and he said, you know, because he talks about since gold is up 60% and investors who dropped gold for Bitcoin are down 16% on their investments. I'm going to read that one more time. He states, since gold is up 60% and investors who dropped gold for Bitcoin are down 16% on their investments. And he states, Grayscale is about to run another ad campaign duping investors into buying Bitcoin. Since Barry Silbert urged investors to drop gold, the price is up 60%. If you did and bought Bitcoin, not only did you miss the gains in gold, but you're down as much as 16% on Bitcoin. When I read that, I was like, man, that's a that's a bummer. Is that really true? But uh, no, it's not. So in retaliation, Barry Salbert said this. He said, hey, check your math, Peter. TV ad started on May 1st, 2019, when Bitcoin was $5,300. Frankly, look at Bitcoin versus gold performance over literally any time frame, and in all cases, Bitcoin has outperformed. By the way, thanks for the continued free advertising for the Grayscale family of crypto funds. Gangster. Good for him. So there's a couple of things uh, to go over that, and that's first of all, Peter Schiff isn't dumb. Uh, he's a pretty smart guy, uh, but uh, you know you can't go around spreading falsehoods like that. You can't say you know this is what it is when it's in actuality it's not. I understand if you have an opinion and you say you know what I think gold is going to do better than than uh, than Bitcoin. Sure, gotcha, right? But if you just straight off lie. Uh, then it's then it's gloves are off and you should be called out for that as many times as possible so um, I had a lot of respect uh, for for Peter I, I thought he was uh, you know just a great marketer but uh, if you're gonna come out and just lie like that I mean I can't support that man so that's uh that's ridiculous when you start to get desperate uh, then you start to do desperate things so if 
I, again, Peter's not a dumb guy. I think he sees the writing on the wall. He knows that right now there's about $10 trillion, nine to $10 trillion in, in gold. And he knows what's gonna happen. Uh, Bitcoin is gonna eat his lunch and all different di digital assets and cryptocurrencies will. So he stands to lose a massive amount of money. And he can't he can't go into digital assets because then he'll be, he'll be a hypocrite. But the best thing for him to do, I'm telling you right now, the best thing for him to do is just come out and go, you know what? I did a deep dive. I did a really uh, in-depth analysis. And I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, Bitcoin and gold is the way to go. If he just came out and said that, no big deal. But I think he's going to uh, go down, uh, captain the ship. And uh, that's when you get desperate and do desperate things. So uh, Peter, uh, bad bad form, gent, bad form. Lastly, Grayscale has been on a winning streak during the June-July crypto market rally, pushed by increased crypto adoption and surging crypto asset prices. Its asset valuation reached an all-time high of $5.5 billion. And if you do not know, uh, that's a pretty good jump considering that uh, this was the investment report. This is in Q1 2020. So you're looking at the uh, end of March, early April, well, early April when it was put out. And they had a, uh, a paltry $2.2 billion. So you take that and it is around, it's August right now, and they're at 5.5. So not too shabby if you're looking at three or four months of, you know, doubling your assets under management. So uh, tip of the hat. Great job, Grayscale. Moving on, and uh, this was a pretty interesting article. Top New York regulator approves eight crypto assets for trading. And I thought this was interesting. So if you don't know, uh, New York's a real pain to get anything done over there, especially with that, uh, that bit license. So a lot of your favorite wallets and different exchanges sometimes don't work if you live in New York. Uh, some have been blessed and, and, and been given the, uh, uh, the blessing from, from New York State or the New York State Department of Financial Services and the bit license and everything else. But uh, it's very difficult to get. And I've talked to different people uh, who actually are responsible for that and they said you know what it's it's easier to get a bill passed in congress than to get everything anything done through the financial services in new york just what they said so what was interesting about this is that new york's top financial regulator has published its green list which covers a number of crypto that license holders can list or custody crypto assets that are included are as such bitcoin no surprise there binance usd that's surprising uh bitcoin cash Good job for them. Ethereum, again, not surprising. Gemini Dollar. Now, again, this comes down to, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. And those Winklevoss twins, let me tell you, they must get into every type of meeting, every type of discussion, every type of business, because those guys are all over the place. And because of that, they were listed for Gemini Dollar. So that's uh, it's usually how business works. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Uh, Litecoin, that was kind of surprising to me. And then the two big ones, Pax Gold, and Paxo standard. So I uh, I did not see that coming. So so Pax Gold may be one of those things to actually look as far as investment. So if you didn't know, uh, Pax Gold is you know uh, backed by gold. That's why right now it's around two thousand dollars, same as gold. And then Paxo standard is also a stable coin, and uh, it's around ninety nine cents to a dollar. So you know congratulations for that. Um, those are just stable coins. So what not great stuff. But next, it talks about, as for coins that are approved for custody, the financial watchdog includes these. And pretty much the same thing, except for um, Ethereum Classic and XRP. So I found that very interesting that uh, XRP and Ethereum Classic, I mean, mostly XRP because I own it. <laughs> That's why it's so concerning to me, uh, that they did not uh, green list it. Uh, you can custody it. You just can't trade it. So I wonder what is going on behind the scenes. Boy, I wish I was uh, just a little, you know, fly on the wall to hear what's really going on. But uh, who knows? Maybe at some point XRP will just be listed as a currency and off we go. But this is all just hearsay and speculation. So anyhow, let's move on. Next up, this is just a really quick blurb. Uh, Danny, one of the subscribers, sent this uh, email to me. He says, hey, Dan, love your channel uh, and just wanted to give you some information. Thought you might like to see this response from Coinbase regarding a transfer of Ethereum Classic from my wallet to Coinbase on the 7th of August, which is still pending on the 10th of August and confirms your take on Coinbase, methinks. Uh, let's find out. So what Coinbase says was, hey, Daniel, thanks for contacting Coinbase support regarding your, your Ethereum Classic confirmation times. Because, I mean, if you're looking at 7 to 10 or August 7th to the 10th of August, a long time. He says, we can confirm that an incident happened beyond our control that is causing your Ethereum Classic confirmation times to increase significantly from 14 hours to around 14 days. 
Wow. Uh, I never thought saw that coming either. Uh, to be that slow. I mean, that's, I mean, we know banks are slow, but geez Louise, 14 days. I don't know what's uh, going on there, but, and it says you can check our incident page for the latest performance updates. And here's our help center for confirmation time. So I took a look at that. And as far as the status, everything's operational. Of course, Coinbase, just perfection. Just kidding. Uh, but it, it talks about past incidents here, August 10th, 9th, and 8th. And on the 8th, and this is something that we had talked about a couple days ago. What had happened was buys and crypto to crypto trades of Chainlink and Algo are disabled on Coinbase.com. We are currently investigating. And then, of course, it was resolved that day, uh, but they investigated that day. So if you're not aware, something potentially great happened for if you got a hold of this is that um, Chainlink was going up from you know, $9, $10, $11, $12, $13. And for some reason, the price got stuck at like $11.38, somewhere around there. And what people were doing is they were buying massively as the price of Chainlink was going to like $12, $13. They were buying Chainlink massively and then they were changing over to, to another exchange and then and, uh, selling it like crazy because like, hey, look at that. I got a huge arbitrage uh, opportunity and they took it. And when, you know, uh, Coinbase found that out, they uh, stopped the trading of Chainlink. So again, uh, Coinbase isn't my favorite. Uh, they've had a lot of different problems and this is just one more. Uh, un but uh, unlike the other ones where there was shutdowns when uh, Bitcoin went up, this is totally different. This is actually a problem that was beneficial to the user. Um, I mean, depending how you look at it. So uh, we'll see what happens. But I got to tell you, again, if you're a multi-billion dollar company, I would think you get these things under control. However, nobody's perfect, right? What are you going to do? And lastly, uh, David sends me a, a pretty good question, which we're going to go over right now for a question today. So let's jump in the office. All right. Welcome back to the office. So today we got a pretty good question. This one comes to us from David and David asks, it's a pretty smart question. He says, I own a small engineering firm. What are the opportunities that you see for businesses like yours and mine to use crypto and DeFi to improve market position? So uh, this is a pretty common question actually I get uh, about DeFi and what to do with uh, you know the interest that you get or the loans that you might want to take out. And the big thing about loans uh, as far as business goes is that um, loans are fantastic if they are used in some way uh, to actually make more money. So if you're do using loans and it is to pay off some kind of debt for your, um, for your business, I mean, there's certain situations, sure, I might want to do something like that. Uh, if it's like the interest rate is like sky high and you got to get out of there. So sure. But uh, usually what you want to do is you want to put uh, the loans that uh, or whatever money that you have from the DeFi or the money that you've made and actually put it into assets or something that can actually produce more revenue or produce more cash flow. So what I'm talking about is like a prime example is my Amazon business. Um, so if I want to take a loan for, let's say, $150,000. And I want to take that and put that into product that I know is going to move very quickly. Maybe it's going to sell out in like two weeks or maybe uh, six weeks. Uh, well, let's say about four. Let's, let's, let's give it a month time frame. That's a pretty good uh, return on investment. So if I take $150,000 um, and I actually get a loan through DeFi and the interest rate is like super low, much lower than a bank and probably a heck of a lot easier because banks suck and they want all this, this information and they want this paperwork and you got to jump through all these hoops and it's just awful. It can also on the t on top of the fact that right now is like the worst time to get a loan, uh, depending on which bank you go to and what you're actually getting a loan for. So if I'm going to use something like that and I get $150,000, let's say that I can sell product and uh, I can get back, oh, I don't know, you know, another 60,000 or 50,000 or whatever else it is, uh, then this is like a prime example of, of why I would do that. So. Um, that's like uh, the one main thing that I see at, as far as DeFi. The biggest mistake I see is uh, the lottery winner. And you've seen this out there like on like, like the e-entertainment type of thing where, where you have this, this lottery person who like wins like $20 million or $100 million and they're broke in like two years because they have no idea what to do with money. And it's, it's the same thing with like professional athletes, uh, same thing with like anybody who comes in, into money very quickly, they're like, I have this money, I'm just going to spend it on stupid stuff and things that I don't need or, or things that don't actually, uh, you know, give me any kind of cash flow and they're broke. So uh, if you're going to use DeFi like that, then you're going to be in a, in a whole hell of a lot of trouble and uh, that's bad. So for, so for David and me, I think we get it. Uh, put it into something that actually produces uh, some type of cash flow. And 
that's the best one. All right, let's jump back. All right, so that's it. Uh, so I want to say thanks for sticking with me. Really appreciate it. And also, let's do some random shout outs. So if you don't know, there's a join now button underneath. It's it's you don't get anything special. It's just like a tip. It's like a buck ninety nine. But uh, for everybody that's new, I'd like to give shout outs and then just random shout outs. So when I first saw this name, Romaine Maurice, I was looking quickly. I was like, is this guy's name Romaine Lettuce? Because I was reading it so quick. I'm like, what a great name. Romaine Maurice, welcome. TTP901, Lance Van Zier, Ili Karchuf. Hope I said that right. And Lionel Zapian, Zapian, Paul G, David Griffith, Sam Keats, Sergeant Crypto. And then who else we got? Uh, Ken Newman, I remember. Uh, Chris Brummett, Telos, Babs, who else? D. Ropke, Jesse B, Young, Jono, and Wine Women Wages. Just a quick shout out. So for everybody, thanks for signing up. Really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two that are going to pop up on your left and right. I have no control over those. YouTube controls that stuff. Uh, just like they control the ads that you saw uh, in the beginning and in the middle and potentially at the end. I have no control over that. So if you saw a scam, uh, go complain to the format, which is YouTube. I have nothing to do with it. And uh, that is it for today. So thanks again for sticking around. appreciate it. See you in the next one.